Hi, I'm David with MediaUnlock.net. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Sony A7S II. Yes, I've had this for about a month now. I've been playing around with it. We did a really cool unboxing video. And uh, if you guys are interested in checking out our unboxing video, I'm going to post a link to it right here. And in today's video, we're just going to kind of review and talk about what I do and I don't like about the Sony A7S II. As well, we're going to talk a little bit about the Canon EF lens Metabones adapter for the A7S II. So let's dive right into what I do and I don't like about the A7S II. So the really cool thing about this new amazing Sony A7S II that the A7S did not have is the internal 4K recording. So you can actually record 4K video footage internally. Now one thing to mention that I haven't seen a lot of other people that have reviewed the camera hasn't mentioned is you are going to need a faster SD card. So what that means is you need a you need an SD card that is down that is able to do about 100 megabytes per second. So as the camera is shooting 4K, it is taking in the information and then sending it to the SD card. Now the 4K shoots uh, at its highest resolution at 100 megabytes per second. So you need an SD card that can keep up with that. So just one thing to mention that if you get this, make sure that you have a faster SD card. Now I'm a big fan of Transcend. They make great SD cards for the price. And uh, that's what I used is one of their SD cards. Actually, let's see what version I have. I have their 64 gigabyte 600X, which is actually 90 megabytes. So it was able to keep up with um, the Sony A7S II. It's 4K uh, downloading as it was recording. It was downloading, you know, sending it straight to the SD card. So one thing to mention, make sure you have a fast enough SD card when you get it so that you aren't like trying to run it on a 50 megabyte card and you're wondering why the 4K isn't working. Well, now you know, you probably need a faster SD card. Okay, so the other really amazing thing they did, not only did they add 4K internally, but now they added S-Log3. Now, if you guys aren't sure or don't know much about S-Log3, the previous Sony A7S had the S-Log2. So S-Log3 is a has a more dynamic range, so it is better for color correction. It will do a better job of when shooting 4K to, to really bring back your highlights and your colors so that you're able to get the nicest, cleanest looking 4K when you go in and you edit um, and you correct it and you, co you correct your color. So that's, that's a really nice thing. As well, previously with the S-Log2, the lowest ISO that you could go to was 3200. With S-Log3 and the new Sony A7S II, you are able to go down to a 1600 ISO, which is really nice because if you're shooting out in the middle of the day, it's really sunny, and you know, 3200 is, is such a high number to be shooting uh, ISO-wise in a very bright day. So being able to go down a whole nother stop is just is really nice. You get an extra stop of light to work with, um, and it's, it's, it's fantastic to be able to do that. So again, it has the S-Log3, and now uh, with Adobe Premiere's uh, new CC updates, uh, I believe they have uh, LUTs uh, presets set into uh, for color correction for the Sony A7S and the S-Log3. They have an S-Log3 LUT, I believe, preset. So it's gonna help with your color correction as well, So which is really nice. So if you're using Adobe Premiere and the A7S II, well, guess what? you're gonna be able to get some really nice, clean, easy to correct colors um, when using this camera. So the next thing to talk about is uh, the 4K. Internally, you know, you get the 4K internally with the, S, the Sony a7S II. It is a cleaner, better 4K than the Sony a7R. So again, the Sony a7R is more geared towards photographers where the Sony a7S is really geared towards videographers where the, the Sony a7S is secondary as photography and the 7R, uh, the, the, the a7R II is really geared, their secondary is, is photo uh, videography. Um, so the ISO capabilities on the a7S is much better, therefore allowing the 4K to look much cleaner than the uh, a7R II, just to let you know. So that's another thing to talk about with the a7S. All right, so they added a five axle stabil stabilizer. So that means that the stabilization, it was a three axle stabilization in the previous Sony A7S where they've added um, a five axle for this. Now it works pretty well. It's still gonna do much better job if you can throw it on uh, a gimbal 
or a glide cam, something like that, something that's going to stabilize it. Um, I'm going to post pop up some footage right now of me. I actually injured my knee recently, so I'm limping and I'm just walking handheld like this um, and I'm shooting my friend. Um, and I'm just holding it like this and I'm shooting him and I'm walking so that you guys can see uh, how steady uh, your shot can be. It's not as steady as I'd like it to be. But again, it's going to be steadier than if I had done it with like my Canon 60 or T3i or uh, another camera that didn't have stabilization really built into the camera. Um, it was, you know, for the most part, it was fairly stable. You can definitely see, see the shake as I'm limping and walking and shooting him, um, shooting him walking. So again, as you guys can see, I'm just, I'm just walking and holding the A7S II in hand and, and just shooting to see how the stabilization came out with the five axle. Um, it's, it's not bad. It's, it's nice to have it. It works really well uh, if that's your only option. If you don't have anything to steady, a tripod, a fly cam, a gimbal, something to steady it, well, guess what? Holding it in hand and not moving, you can get really nice steady shots. Um, while moving, you know, it's a little bit of technique, but you can also get um, acceptable shots. Not great shots, but acceptable. Uh, again, we're going the Sony A7S and the A7S II, amazing low light capabilities. Uh, for me, there wasn't a massive difference in the two cameras as um, far as the low light's concerned. You're still getting really nice, clean ISO, um, up to 30 and 40,000 uh, ISO, which is just amazing. And with the right noise uh, software, you're able to clean that up. With the S-Log3, though, and the 4K internally, you actually may be able to get a little bit cleaner shot in the higher ISOs than the A7S um, because the S-Log3 and the dynamic range is just so amazing. Um, so, but again, this thing, this is why people get this camera is because of its low light capabilities. It can just, ah, it can see things better than your eyes can see at night. Um, it's just amazing what this camera can do as far as its low light capabilities and how high ISO it can go and still get a very nice, clean shot. Something else they added into the Sony A7S two is 1080p at 120 frames per second, which looks beautiful. Um, I'm going to show you some footage here. And again, there'll be footage added at the very end of this video of, of some of the, uh, some of the uh, stock footage, some of the stuff we went out and shot so you guys could actually see it. Um, it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the 120 frames per second at 1080p. Uh, it just looks great, uh, in my opinion. And it's really nice to have it. Now, of course, it would be nice to have 120 frames per second at 4K, but uh, that's asking a little much. Maybe next year or the year after's model will offer that. So, but again, at 120 frames per second, 1080p, it still looks very nice and very clean. And it does help to have a wider angle lens when shooting at that 120 frames at 1080p. So you can get more in the shot. The autofocus system seems to work a little bit better than the previous Sony a7S. It's not a lot better, but the continuous autofocus is, uh, is pretty good. Uh, it does take a second from focusing from one item to another. Um, so if you're moving the camera, you know, if you're, if you're moving the camera, it may take a second for it to refocus, but it's nice and smooth. It doesn't look jerky um, where uh, a lot of the, the new Canon uh, lenses that, that don't have, if you have a, uh, a Canon body, camera body that does the autofocus and you're not using an STM lens, which are specific for autofocus, you can get some jerkiness um, with the camera, uh, with the lens when shooting, where it's nice, continuous, and smooth with the Sony a7S II, which I really, really like. So when I was shooting video and I was uh, going from one side to another, it was nice and smooth, it, but it did take a second sometimes for it to start Focus, refocusing on the item that I wanted it to. Again, with the Sony A7S and the A7S II, you get the focus peaking, which is really nice. So it lets you know where, where you're actually focusing on. It, it, you can change the colors. I used red and I was able to actually sh see uh, where, where my focus was at, which really helps um, because the way that Sony works, they don't have a manual and autofocus on their lenses like Canon and Nikon and many other cameras offer. Um, so when you're focusing, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit different. Uh, I find it easier to focus with a, 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 a Canon, let's say, 6D um, 
than, than to focus with the Sony a7S. Now the continuous focus is nice, but far as manual focus, uh, I just, I find it easier to focus uh, with, with a Canon or a Nikon, the way their focus system set up with their lenses. Um, but you do get the focus peaking, which is really nice with the Sony a7S and the a7S II. So you do, you do get to see where you are focused at, where, you know, it gets these little red dots and you can see, okay, I'm focused in this general area. This is what I want to be focused on. It's really nice to have. Now it has 169 autofocus points, which is really nice. Um, we're going to dive into why that's bad for the Metabones um, here in a minute when we talk about the things I did not like about the Sony a7S II. Another thing that I found really impressive that I did not see coming uh, with the Sony a7S II is its five frames per second burst mode when taking pictures. So I'm actually going to turn the camera on and let you guys listen to this. Um, it worked out considerably better than I thought it would. Um, when I, I went out to a skate park and I was shooting some skaters and I was snapping some pictures and I was overly impressed with how well uh, the burst mode really worked on this. That's something that Sony has kind of lacked in in the past is that it doesn't do well um, with uh, how many pictures you can take per second and how well it processes it. But in the Sony a7S II, I'm really impressed with it. I don't know how it works uh, with the Sony a7R II, but just listen to this. Um, I'm just gonna gonna burst mode it right now. And wait a minute, let's, let me make sure we are on. We're set up here, we're in continuous mode. Uh, yeah, okay. So I just took a handful of pictures and it's probably gonna take a second to buff. Right now it's saying right in memory card, unable to operate, that's gonna take a second for it to catch up and, and, and really send all the information to the SD card. Um, and it's doing that still right now. And we're gonna wait a second and then I'm gonna burst it out again. But I was really impressed with this um, as, as a uh, photographer uh, that it was able to uh, take so many pictures so fast. Uh, did, and it's ready to go again and let me focus. You can hear that. Anyways, highly impressed with that. That was awesome, something that I did not expect. I got some really cool shots at the skate park uh, with that, being able to have that nice burst mode. So something I did not talk about the Sony a7S that I want to talk about the Sony a7S II is that it does have Wi-Fi built in where you can actually connect to your home network and there is apps that can be downloaded. Um, unfortunately, you have to pay for these apps and I find that to be quite annoying. Um, certain apps, and we're going to talk about that, that's some of the things I did not like about the Sony a7S II or the Sony a7S per se. Um, but it's kind of cool, you can actually connect in to, the, the, to your home network and you can go online and you can actually download apps for the camera um, to do certain uh, very specific things like time lapses and uh, a handful of other apps that do different, different items. So now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what I didn't like about the Sony a7S II. Rolling shutter. You're still gonna have a rolling shutter issue. Um, that issue was a problem with the Sony a7S, the a7S II, the rolling shutter does work a little bit better. So you don't see it as much when you're going back and forth, but the rolling shutter does still exist. Uh, again, with the apps that I was just talking about, um, you have to pay for them. I wanted to do some time-lapse photography and, and test out the time-lapse uh, capabilities with this. And then I found out you need a, a, an intervalometer, which I, I, I highly, um, suggest that you have one anyways if you do a lot of time lapses but most cameras with newer technology they should just have it built into the camera these days you should have the option to shoot a time lapse in all newer model DSLRs which you don't have that option unless you pay ten dollars to Sony and that I've read the time lapse app doesn't even work that well um, but it's an app that you have to pay ten dollars for you download it right onto the camera from their website on the camera when you connect into the Wi-Fi and, uh, and you pay $10 and then you can shoot time lapses and I've heard it, it doesn't work very well. So that's something that really frustrated me um, as, as a photographer, as someone that likes to do time lapse that I have to pay more money or I have to get an external interval meter. It would be nice for just something basic time lapse to be able to have that built into the camera and I don't know why they didn't do that. Maybe they're trying to get an extra $10 out of a lot of customers, which I think is bogus personally. Battery life isn't that amazing um, with the camera, unfortunately. So they do send you two batteries, so you do get that starting right off, right off the bat. You do have two batteries that comes with the camera, but the battery life, especially when shooting 4K, you're gonna run through it a lot faster. Many other cameras 
that are able to shoot 4K, um, like the GH, uh, I think the GH4 or whatever, it, the uh, quality or the, the battery life is much better on those cameras. So I do wish that the battery life was a little bit better. At least they do send you two batteries. So, um, but again, if you're going to be shooting a lot of 4K footage, you're probably going to need five, six, seven batteries. So plan to order a handful of batteries if you're going to be doing a lot of video footage with this. The last thing I really want to talk about with Sony a7S and really Sony cameras in general, top of the line cameras, medium of the line cameras, is that they just don't have a lot of lenses that, that offer you options. Um, so I'm using the 16 to 35 right now. It's an f4. They don't even have a 2.8 version. Um, it is nice that they work with Carl Zeiss a lot, and you get Carl Zeiss makes very nice, clean glass. Um, it's very well known for that. But the problem is, is that you just don't have a lot of options um, for your lenses. So then you want to look at like third-party options, like this Metabones, and I'm gonna I'll pull this out so you guys can actually see it. Uh, this Metamodes adapter for like your Canon EF lenses. It connects into here, and then you can connect a Canon lens to here. So here are the problems with using the Metabones adapter um, and the Sony a7S II. The autofocus is pretty much non-existent. You, it's, it's, you cannot autofocus with uh, your Canon lenses. So you pop this on, you want to take some pictures, it's going to be all manual focus. It, what happens is, is it keeps trying to find a place to focus in on and then it defocuses and refocuses and defocuses. That issue is because it has so many uh, autofocus points built into the Sony a7S II that it can't make a decision on what it wants to autofocus. This is a $400 adapter right here, um, and it's not worth it's not worth 50 bucks in my opinion uh, because uh, you can't do any continuous autofocusing for video, so you have to do all manual focusing for video, and you you have to do all manual focusing um, for pictures as well because just it's not going to autofocus, um, so that's very frustrating. Um, spending you know four hundred dollars on an item that really can't be used except for something very specifically. So if you're doing stuff professionally, um, this is not a professional uh, extra piece, third-party piece to add to your Sony A7S. Now I have heard that as a photographer on the uh, Sony A7R2, that this does work considerably better. Um, somehow it works with the autofocus points better on the Sony A7R II, and you're able to you're able to use uh, external lenses a lot, third-party lenses a lot easier. But for the Sony A7S, don't spend the four hundred dollars. It's a waste of your money, in my opinion. Um, all in all, though, this thing is a beast. Okay, uh, do you really want to spend the extra money to upgrade from the Sony A7S? And the answer should be yes. Yes, this is well worth the extra money. Um, and you do get some really cool custom functions as well. So you get some buttons uh, where you can customly function. You can set up custom functions like your shutter, ISO, stuff like that. You get three of the buttons, custom function buttons, which are really nice as well. But yeah, the Sony A7S is well worth the upgrade. I really, really like it. I would probably be shooting Sony only if I could afford to switch over, but I got so much money invested into Canon glass and Canon bodies. Um, and then I'd have to sell everything and rebuy everything. But if Sony like sent me an email or called me up and said, hey, we want you to sh shoot Sony, we're gonna send you out equipment. Um, I'm sorry, Canon, but I would leave you in a heartbeat because Sony is, is really leading the pack in the best DSLR cameras on the market right now, in my opinion. And that's my honest to God opinion. I'm not getting paid to say that. I mean, Sony's killing it. They're just killing it and they're leaving everybody else in the dust right now, in my opinion. So if you're looking for a great 4K camera, take a look at this bad boy, Sony A7S II. If you have the Sony A7S and you've got the money, or you sell your Sony A7S and you have the, the extra money, get this thing. It's well worth it. You're getting 4K, you're getting S-Log3. Um, you are getting, uh, the, with the S-Log3, you can go down to a 1600 ISO instead of a minimum of 3200 ISO. You're getting five actual stabil stabilizer. This camera uh, is, is, is really much better than the Sony a7S. Um, I think it's really awesome. They added a lot of nice, cool features to this camera, making it worth the money, making it worth the upgrade, where a lot of camera companies, Canon and Nikon included, they do these small little upgrades 
uh, and they don't do any major upgrades for like every, they make the major upgrades every two or three years, uh, where Sony decided to make some leaps and bounds uh, one year after putting out the Sony A7S, or two years. I'm not sure if it's one or two years that the Sony A7S, I think the Sony A7S was out for um, um, one year, and then they put out the A7S II, and it's just, it's so much nicer. So this is my opinion on the Sony A7S II. I hope it helped you out um, with figuring out any questions you may have on it. There will be footage at the end of the video, so you can check out some extra slow-mo footage and uh, we'll probably do some color, color comparison so you can see the color correction. And uh, yeah, just really happy with this. And at the very end of this video, there will be a link. There'll be a picture and a link. And if you are interested in, buy, if you are interested in buying this, Clicking on that link, going to B&H, and purchasing it from them, if you're already going to do so, really helps keep this channel alive because um, we do get a small bit of commission every time um, our referral link is used to purchase things through B&H. So if you are thinking about buying this and this helped you out and you're going to get it from B&H anyways, please pop to the end of this video and click on that link so you can help us out here at Media Unlock. Thanks for stopping in, and we'll catch you guys next time. You and I till the end. Hey guys, if you'd like to check out our website where we have all kinds of fun and exciting blogs, videos, and extra information that isn't on our YouTube page, click right here. If you'd like to talk to us or contact us and kind of take a look at all the different stuff that we have going on, um, we've kind of funneled it all through our Facebook. You can hit our Facebook page right here and follow us or like us. Now, if you like to look at cool pictures and behind the scenes stuff, we do that on Instagram right here. So go on and follow us on Instagram. And of course, we've got our cute little bird right here, Mr. Twitter. And you can follow us as we do our short tweets.